is for education and entertainment purposes only. Please consult with your healthcare provider before making any changes to your health plan. Hey beautiful soul, it's Jacqueline here from the Las Livia Chronicles where I discuss all things lichen sclerosis. So if you are looking to empower yourself with information, find acceptance and reclaim your life, then please subscribe to this channel and keep on watching. And if you have a friend or loved one with lichen sclerosis and you want to learn more about the mental and physical health aspects of living with lichen sclerosis so that you can better support them in their journey, then please subscribe to this channel and share it with them as well. All right, so this video is going to be a little bit different. Um, what I want to talk about today is fusing, in particular how to help prevent fusing or how to make it harder for different parts of the vulva to fuse together. So I am going to discuss that. Uh, spoiler alert, it's by using emollient, but I'm gonna do a bit of a live demonstration to kind of show you, um, you know, visually the point that I'm trying to get across. Um, and by live demonstration, don't worry, this is like PG-13. I'm not like doing a live demonstration of like me putting emollient on my vulva. You'll, you'll see what I mean. Just stick around, but I promise it's PG-13. Um, so no worries there. Um, all right, so if you are curious to know how emollient can help prevent fusing, then keep on watching this video. And as always, if you find the information in this video helpful, please, please, please leave me a thumbs up, please subscribe or leave me a comment. It helps me channel out so much and I so appreciate each and every one of you. All right, let's jump into this. Okay, so if you're new to my channel and you are not sure what fusing or resorption means in the context of lichen sclerosis, then you'll definitely wanna watch a more detailed and informational video where I explain exactly what the two mean. Um, so I will leave a card up here or up here and I will also leave that linked in the description box below. But really briefly, um, fusing is essentially when different parts of your vulva that are distinct start to stick together with another part. So. For example, I have this lovely vulva puppet from the body agency. So this can happen on a number of areas on the vulva. So really briefly, let's just go over. So this kind of navy blue thing up here is the clitoral prepuce, also known as the clitoral hood. This pink little ball here is the glans clitoris. This magenta long kind of stuff here, that's your labia minora. And then this darker purpley color, that's your labia majora. So the outer lips, the inner lips, and then you'd have the urethra, the vestibule, the vaginal opening here, the perineum, and then the anus, which is not on the puppet, but you can just imagine that's a little down here. Okay. So what happens with lichen sclerosis is that the inflammation can cause a number of changes to the texture um, of the skin, of the vulvar skin. So the texture of your skin can start feeling um, kind of sticky and tacky. At least that's how it felt for me when I started the process of fusing. And I actually didn't realize that I was fusing when I was. I just thought I was super sticky because it was like humid outside, um, which I think is like a reasonable inference to make, but that wasn't what was going on. So when the skin starts getting sticky and stuff, different parts of the vulva can start to stick to each other. So for example, these, the clitoral hood, the prepuce, and the glands are two distinct parts, right? So we normally um, can see the glands clitoris and the clitoral hood, and you can kind of retract the clitoral hood. Now, what can happen with folks with lichen sclerosis is that these two parts can start to stick together so that this hood here, this navy blue hood, will start to actually cover the glands clitoris such that you can't retract it anymore. So you can barely see. So maybe you see like a bit of pink 
a bit of the glands peeking out, but you can't easily retract it because the two are stuck together. The same thing can happen for various parts of the vulva. Your labia minora can start to stick to the labia majora as well, such that they'll kind of become harder to separate. Like here we can separate them easily, and here we can't, they're kind of stuck together. Um, and so in that video on fusing and resorption, I kind of explain that, you know, I see it as being kind of on a spectrum where fusing is the kind of start and the end result of that fusing can, not guaranteed, but it can be resorption, which is where the two distinct parts become one, essentially, such that, you know, like the labia majora, if it resorbs with the labia minora, the two are kind of flush now. There's no two distinct parts anymore. So this causes changes to how your vulva looks and those changes, those anatomical changes can be incredibly distressing for us. They were definitely distressing for me. Um, and I, I went through like a, like a whole thing of, you know, feeling gross and ugly and wrong and ashamed and, you know, just being obsessed with labia minora and, you know, as this whole ordeal. Um, so these changes can be really distressing for many of us. And so it's, you know, probably not unsurprising that a lot of us want to do anything we can to re to keep what we currently have, right? Whatever we're currently working with, we don't want to lose any more of it. So many people want to avoid fusing in the first place so that they can avoid resorption and kind of permanent changes to the vulva. So how can we prevent fusing? Well, first of all, if you've watched my video on what is lichen sclerosis and is it serious, which is kind of like an introductory kind of primer on, you know, what lichen sclerosis is, you'll know that lichen sclerosis is caused by inflammation at the basement layer of the vulvar skin and that that inflammation causes changes to all of the layers of skin above it which can create texture changes to the vulva, color changes to the vulva, and those textural changes can lead to pain and itching. So it is absolutely imperative that you follow a treatment plan that has been shown to decrease those levels of inflammation. So again, please note that in what follows, what I'm going to suggest is meant to be in conjunction with a treatment plan. So that second part is using an emollient, using an emollient in conjunction with a treatment plan that has been proven to decrease those levels of inflammation can help prevent fusing, or at the very least, it makes it harder for those parts, sorry, I lost my vulva, I lost my vulva, I lost my labia venora, now I lost my whole vulva. No, um, it can make it harder for those parts to kind of stick together. So we're just trying to make it really damn difficult for our body to fuse. That's kind of what we're trying to do. So let's talk first about emollients. Um, I'm actually not going to talk very long uh, about emollients because I do have a video on that. So I will link that up here, up here, and in the description box below. And I also have a product review for my favorite emollients, and I will leave that as well in the description box below. But very briefly, a vulvar emollient is essentially a moisturizer for your vulva. <laughs> That's essentially what it is. It is there to help hydrate and soften and protect and soothe the vulvar skin. Examples of these can range from cheap options like coconut oil, olive oil, to you know mid-range products like Clio by Demiva, and then there are more expensive products like you know V Magic, etc. That you can use. Um, to kind of hydrate, protect, and soothe the vulvar area. All right, so, cool. You might be like, great, Jacqueline, we get it. You love your emollient, we know it's important, but what the heck does this have to do with fusing or preventing fusing, right? You might be thinking like, I understand that it hydrates and soothes and protects, but I don't really see how this is gonna make a difference with fusing. And so again, I just wanna reiterate that using emollients, you know, and what I'm going to say, you know, assumes that you're also using this in conjunction with a treatment plan to address the inflammation, which is causing the skin to kind of want to stick together in the first place. So I'm going to demonstrate this by using some tape and some olive oil. So I have some tape here 
but I have cut this into kind of um, little strips and they're next to me on the desk here because this um, tape has been giving me a lot of grief. Uh, it's missing the back and it's also missing the like metal attachment piece here where you would like cut the strips. So I had to pre-cut them so that you don't have to watch me struggle through that with this. And then I'm going to use my arm and then I have this dish here. It's just a little dipping dish and it is full of olive oil, which is uh, something that folks use as their emollient. Um, coconut oil, olive oil, avocado oil, and then all the other types. Okay, so here's how I'm going to explain this. Let's pretend that like my forearm here is your labia majora, the outer lips, okay? And then let's pretend that this strip of tape here is your inner lips, your labia minora. So I'm going to stick this onto my arm. So you'll see that that's stuck pretty well and pretty easily. And one of the reasons for that is that there's nothing on my skin. So it can adhere and stick together pretty easily. There's nothing kind of, you know, there's no kind of barrier in between making it hard for the labia minora to stick to the labia majora. But now let's pretend that my labia majora and my labia minora have some emollient. So I'm gonna dab a little bit of olive oil onto the skin here, which you can see a little bit of a sheen. And then I am going to take a piece of tape, okay? And I'm going to coat it in that olive oil. So I'm going to drop this in and kind of let it soak up some of that olive oil so you can see that it's getting nice and coated here. See some of that dripping off that oil. So I'm just gonna knock some of it off so I don't get a ton of oil on my bed sheets. And now this, you know, piece of tape which represents our labia minora has oil on it. So we've got emollient on. Now when I try and stick it, it actually won't stay together. It won't hold on. It doesn't actually stick to the arm so you can peel it off really easily but it doesn't actually stick so we're kind of creating this barrier making it hard for that tape to actually be able to permanently stick to it so that lotion or that cream or whatever you're using creates a barrier such that it's not actually sticking to you know your skin so this is how I like to explain it to people, right? So it's not saying that using emollient is going to guarantee that things don't stick together, but what you're doing instead is you're making it harder for those two things to stick together by creating that kind of oily, greasy barrier so that they might kind of sit against each other, but they're not actually sticking or adhering. Um, and so, you know, when I put that first thing of tape on, that stuck very well and the, you would actually like, you know, hear kind of the ripping off when you would take it off. Whereas, you know, it just kind of, when I had the oil, it just kind of sat on top of the oil on top of, you know, my forearm or my labia majora for this, you know, little demonstration, but it didn't actually stick to the skin. It was sitting on that layer of oil. So again, helping it such that it's not actually sticking. So we're creating a little barrier and making it harder for it to stick together.